Hey everybody, uh, Mr. Constitution Douglas V. Gibbs here, Constitution Study Television, and we're in Article 1, Section 5 for this video. Uh, the very beginning, the very first paragraph, and if you go to Article 1, Section 5 of your pocket constitution or your constitution book, whatever you have, uh, it reads, each house shall be the judge of the elections, returns, and qualifications of its own members. So after the election of its members, be it as the Senate or the House, it's up to each house to determine uh, if it was done right, what, what the uh, final tally was, if the person's qualified, do they meet the age requirement, uh, have they been in the United States long enough, so on and so forth. Then it says, and a majority of each shall constitute a quorum to do business. A quorum uh, means the number required to do business. There are some uh, organizations or businesses where they require you know, 10% or 20% to be present in order to do business. Some of them requires a supermajority. In the case of Congress, it is 50% plus one, a majority. Then it goes on to say, but a smaller number may adjourn from day to day. That is called a pro forma session, P-R-O hyphen F-O-R-M-A, pro forma session. The purpose of a pro forma session, they can stay in, in session, they don't go out of session, maybe they're on vacation, most of them are gone. They don't have enough to do business, but they're in a pro forma session. Well, in the case of the Senate, if they don't trust the president especially, the president can't do a recess appointment. In other words, appoint uh, persons to uh, positions as officers in the government, whatever. Because uh, remember, the Senate has to confirm appointments, right? Uh, when it comes to the nominations by the president, be it a judge or uh, hold a position in a department or something like that. Um, so the pro forma session is available to uh, the Senate where they can be under the number required to do business, but yet still in session. So the president cannot appoint the recess appointment because they're not on recess technically, but they can't confirm either because there's not enough of them. So that's called a pro forma session, and normally it's used when, well, Senate and the president are opposite parties. Then it goes on to say, and may be authorized to compel the attendance of absent members. Or what if something happens where there's an emergency? You're in a pro forma session and war breaks out, let's say. They can compel the uh, presence of the other members in such manner and under such penalties as each house may provide. So they can actually compel members to, to be there and create a penalty if they don't show up. That's up to each house. Once again, we have to remember that at the time of the writing this, Congress wasn't the enemy. That was our check against the president. And the two houses of Congress were different. The House of Representatives represented the people. The, House, the Senate, remember, were, the senators were appointed by the state legislatures. So in that case, uh, they represented the states. And they checked each other because they were different from each other. Ideology uh, may have played a part in the House, but not so much in the Senate. And they were there to check the president. The president then would check them back with vetoes. And then they could override that check with by an override of the veto. So the, the thing is, our system is missing those checks. 17th Amendment, remember, changed the Senate to being voted in by the people. So there's some natural checks that just aren't there. But these mechanisms were in place to make sure that certain things could happen. But anyway, that's Article 1, Section 5, the first paragraph. Uh, next time I do a video, we'll move on down, Article 1, Section 5. Thanks for watching. Douglas V. Gibbs, United We Stand, Combined We Kick Butt. God bless America, my friends. God bless you. We'll see you next time right here on Constitution Study Television.